Now, if the ladder of educational opportunity rises high at the doors of some youth and scarcely rises at the doors of others, while formal education is made a prerequisite for socio-economic and occupational advance, then education may become the means not of eliminating race and class inequality, but of reinforcing and solidifying them. That's what Truman said in 1947. I think really this initiative is very important because for me um, tonight was amazing. It's really it's about just the energy and the innovation of youth in tackling something that we can all agree is a problem and needs to be addressed. And I just found that to be really something that has been the most remarkable thing for me today. It's about young people doing something, um, about something that directly impacts them and taking their future in their own hand. The programs that Tusanari has, connecting rural or peripheral students to the center, is something that I lived through. I could not probably have had the opportunity to be where I am today if somebody did not actually make an initiative. If we are fighting poverty, education is one thing that we must give to our people. If we are fighting the inequalities, education is the equalizer. Unless we achieve socio-economic liberation, we are in serious trouble. And what we have to confront in our society is the level of inequality. Because if we don't fix inequality, it will come to gobble up the political liberation of the last 20 years. At this time, for this generation, the skills divide and the continued marginalization of rural communities will have to come to an abrupt end. And we will take that responsibility. Mukobe shares with us his personal experiences, and this has already been highlighted in the introductory remarks, that his studies at universities, at university, were supported by the South African taxpayer through the South African government. And he felt an obligation to give back, to do the same for people like him, for people like myself, for people like many of us coming from humble beginnings. The issue of education must be the first and foremost priority if we want to develop our country. Um, and I think that us being able to use the full skill set of South Africa is what makes education such a powerful tool. And that's really the only way we're going to grow. And I think the only way we can do that is by supporting it and giving money meaningfully to make sure that the dream happens. It is a noble cause to educate people. You empower them. You can't take them from, uh, or from whatever they have achieved in terms of education. I know how difficult it is without being empowered with education because I lived it, I went through it. Only if, gradually, South Africans will realize how important education is. I was speaking in one place and I was saying, I have a problem that education is treated like a commodity. You must buy it. If you have no money to buy it, you are left behind. It's an unfortunate thing. So I support the chair of the <coughs> commission. How do you get to a point where education is not going to be expensive? Perhaps those who have money to pay for it, but those who don't, let them not be punished for it. Being part of Tusana New Foundation means a lot because um, I wouldn't have been studying right now. Um, and I'm so grateful to be part of it because I can go to school without being worried about what am I going to eat because they helped me to get a bursary. It is through this foundation that, I've, that I, 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 I wake up in the morning and I, and, and I pursue a career which is most people can't really afford to, to do what I do. If you have the, the opportunity to access an education and get a degree, do not become arrogant, become humble. There are people who might not necessarily have degrees, but through self-determination and self-education who are able to take themselves far. Respect those people, honor them. But the purpose of my speech is less to talk about what I've achieved, but it's to humbly ask you, 
What is your Jupiter? If you're a young person here today, what's that impossible goal that you find yourself striving towards? Or if you're a business leader here today, how can you assist other young people in finding their own Jupiters? So that 20 years from now, we'll remember this night when the world will ask us, what have the young South Africans done with their freedom? And we'll humbly respond and say, we've used our freedom to solve our socio-economic challenges. We've used our freedom to create a more equal society. We've used our freedom to solve the challenges we have in energy and to fulfill the potential of a united Africa that is shining and bright for the rest of the world to follow. But that begins now. Tusanani is doing its best to motivate, to get bursaries. But it shouldn't be Tusanani's job to find bursaries. It should be Tusanani's job to motivate young people, to give them the information, to take them out of the rural areas, to give them study guides, to make sure that they pass. At the end of this dinner, take out that corporate check. Take out that corporate check. And think about this, when you take out that corporate check, you pay for a child to have a quality education. And you don't transform the life of the child. You don't transform the life of that village. You transform the possibilities for the nation. I must say that there is nothing special about me, Ndando, or anybody. You are going to see, we are going to be giving a certificates of, uh, of uh, top achievers here. But I can tell you there's very little difference between these students and those who did not get the, the distinctions. What we are trying to do is to create an enabling environment whereby Mukwabe and Nandos become the norm and not the exception. That's what we're trying to do. And since inceptions, we've enrolled 451 students in universities, 88% of whom have passed. Last year, to be more specific, we enrolled 35 students at UJ, 33 past 17 with distinctions. I would like to thank Tuzanani Foundation for helping me to pursue my dreams because now I can, um, I will be able to, when I finish my degree at least I can be able to, uh, to support my family and yes, I, I'm, just, I'm just very grateful for being part of them. I just want to say thank you, thank you very much to Tuzanani Foundation. I'd like to thank the Tusanani Foundation for what it does for society as a whole and, and the country. From, from the underprivileged kids that it, it, it helps and the primitive minds of these underprivileged kids to help mold them and give them a future. And personally, I'd like to thank them for the opportunity that they've given me to wake up in the morning and pursue a goal, a dream. All of us here have some possibility to help. Education is the most powerful tool you can use to change the world. So if we're going to address this inequality, you cannot do it without education. If we educate people, we are breaking the cycle of poverty. If not us, then who? If not here, then where? And if not now, then when? Thank you. Allah, Allah, Tusanani. God bless you.